Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 13th. First up, this is from Manolis of Manolis Vlog Channel. He asked me if I could do a review on the Pivot Head sunglasses. Well, because of the fact I don't have a spare $299 around to buy them and try them out, and I doubt they would send them to me for free, I asked if he actually could uh, find me a user that had used them, especially somebody that was in the moto vlogging community and used them in a variety of ways to do a review. And as a matter of fact, his friend Christian from Denmark, I contacted him and he agreed to do a review for me. So I'm going to play about 30 seconds of his video review, which is quite a bit longer and very much in depth about the Pivot Head sunglasses, which are sunglasses, high definition camera, and seem to be fairly decent for moto vlogging in uh, good light. So check out a little bit of his video. Video sunglasses. Whoa. Yes, indeed. If you do not see opportunities and potential excuses for playing out your role in life as a total perv, it is not the shade's fault. It wasn't very long ago that something like this wasn't even possible. My first camera weighed about 30 pounds and could not record even half the resolution. The sensor in these sunglasses is better than the one in most smartphones, and you have a choice of recording in resolutions up to and including 1080p. Now there are no excuses for not recording things that you could never have recorded before. Oh right, so it's recording. And then you download it. So now, so we've had about half an hour of me embarrassing myself. Now I shut up for half an hour. <laughs> Got a broken gear pedal here. Thank you, Christian, and be sure to check out the link that I will have below to his full video and the full review. Next up, this is from 54 Shadow. Um, this happened just back in June. As a matter of fact, June 13th, a human-powered helicopter actually won the Sikorsky Prize. Uh, the prize, I believe, was around $250,000. This uh, outfit was called, let me get their name right here, it was Aero Velo. That's what it was called, and the craft was called the Atlas. To win the prize, what you have to do is a totally human-powered helicopter. It has to be in flight for a full 60 seconds. It has to stay within a 10-meter square, about 33 foot by 33 foot, and it has to attain an altitude of 10 meters, approximately, you know, not 10, I'm sorry, not 10 meters, what is it? It has to rise to about 3 meters, 10 feet. So it has to rise for about 3 meters or 10 feet, stay within a 10 meter by 10 meter box, and stay aloft for 60 seconds. What they actually stayed aloft for is, I think I have it written down here, um, they stayed aloft for 64 seconds and they reached a height of 3.3 meters uh, at least one time during the flight. So. Congratulations to that team for actually winning the prize. They won it actually in the last few minutes. They uh, rented a soccer, an indoor soccer stadium, and they tried and tried and didn't quite make it to uh, enough to get the prize. And during the last few minutes, when they were going to have to vacate, they gave it one last try and made it. So, congratulations to you guys. This next one comes from my friend Gogosor. Um, evidently, over in France now, he uh, rides over in France, and there's a outfit called the French Federation of Angry Bikers, and what they are doing is they're taking it upon themselves to mark dangerous intersections. They actually spray paint on the road. You will see the warnings ahead of time, and I'll give you the link to this video, but if there's an intersection that maybe has uh, uh, slick tar snakes or uh, too much gravel or sand or anything that might be a danger to a motorcyclist, they give uh, a fair warning, and uh, you can check out. His video isn't actually very long, but it's a, uh, a pretty good thing. It's uh, I guess they're basically taking the law in their hands and what they are doing could be considered illegal, but uh, you know it's for the safety of uh, bikers as a whole, so check out his video if you get a chance. Um, next up, this is um, something that happened uh, just a little while back. It happened on July 2nd, the Russian uh, Proton rocket, which actually overall in the last few years have had a pretty good track record, but they had a rocket fail that was carrying three satellites worth $200 million. It basically went off the launch pad and just totally went out of control and just crashed down just, um, I think, something like a, a kilometer or two away from the, the launching area, just like it was totally out of control. Well, what they traced it back to was when they examined the wreckage, they had found out that some of the sensors for the orientation were actually installed upside down. 
and then uh, they traced that back to a young technician actually installing them the wrong way, which my question would be to that, why would they even make a type of uh, plug or a type of circuit board where you could install them the wrong way? Wouldn't you put some kind of a pen or a slot configuration in there in the first place so that you couldn't uh, orient them the wrong way? And uh, as far as conveying um, all the blame on a young technician, wouldn't you have double and triple checks on stuff like that? I mean, even in our factories, we have uh, checks for components on circuit boards to where uh, it's not even done by a human being. A camera actually takes a photograph of the parts, and then if any part's out of place, or and uh, in the case of these sensors, I guess they had a big arrow on them, a computer could easily spot something like that and kick it off for uh, human beings to examine. So it looks to me like a lot of foresight. Probably the young technician's going to end up like a lot of places. Uh, he's going to be the one fired and take the blame, and then uh, all the other people that are responsible for double-checking and checking that never did are probably going to skate or get very little punishment. But Yeah, anyway, that's what's happening with that. This next one is from Cuca Rider. This is an update to an outfit called Lit Motors that I had talked about before. They have the enclosed motorcycle that was gyro-stabilized. In fact, in one of their videos, you could actually see it in a, an intersection impact where it was scooted to the side, but it still didn't fall over because the gyro stabilizers were in effect. I've got a link here. Now this is an older link going back to 2011, but it's kind of cool because it has a reporter on there that some of you geeks may recognize. If you're someone like me that used to watch ZDTV or Tech TV, the reporter actually reviewing this lit motorcycle is called Sumi Das. And you may remember her for the old, from the old Tech TV and ZDTV days. But I've got some updates on it. It was supposed to be originally released in 2013 and at a cost of $16,000. He hasn't been getting the kind of support that he expected, so I think most of these things are pretty much going to be hand-built rather than uh, on uh, some kind of large-scale production line. But it still is going to be available. They're looking for a release date now of 2014, and the price has jumped to $24,000. And uh, just in case you want, you can put down a, a $10,000 deposit and get uh, in line to be one of the first 20 to get one. But you can go all the way down to a $250 deposit and be one of the first of, uh, I don't know how many, maybe 10000 to get one or something, which I don't see as very realistic. And uh, they say you can get a refund of your deposit if you uh, deposit and uh, change your mind or whatever, but there's a 15% fee on top of that. So um, I don't know how many people there are. There will probably be some people, and I, I'm sure... It, it does seem like it's going to come out in limited edition, but I don't know. I doubt I'll be putting any money up on a deposit for it myself. And the next one comes from Desmo Alice. Um, this is about, is the sun a giant comet? Um, obviously the sun couldn't be a comet because of the material it's made out of, but what they're talking about is does a sun such as ours have a comet-like tail? And they've had theories for a long, long time that suns like ours and probably even every sun if it's moving through the interstellar medium which nothing is actually staying still in relation to other things it's always moving somewhat there would be some kind of a tail but the problem is it wouldn't be something that could register with optical instruments like telescopes so what they did was they put the ibex satellite up to be able to catch neutral high energy particles which they believe the tail would mostly be made of and they've actually plotted out that the tail streaming from the comet like tail streaming from the sun is somewhat clover leaf shaped with two parts of the clover leaf being high speed particles and two other parts of the clover leaf being a little bit slower speeding particles. So if you get a chance to check that article out, this is from extinct extinctionprotocol.wordpress.com. As usual, all links to everything will be down in the descriptions. And that also leads me into another article too about the Galax satellite. The uh, Galax satellite has just been recently shut down, I believe as of June 28th, they shut the Galaxy satellite down. Um, but one thing about it is last year in May, um, it was actually turned over to uh, California Institute of Technology. There is a law that if uh, for some reason NASA for Research Products Projects decides not to fund them any longer, they can be offered to nonprofits and educational institutions. So um, as of last year, Caltech is the one in charge of it basically. So even though it's shut down and put out of commission, um, it may still come back to life. There's a fundraiser being raised. But back to my main subject about comet tails and suns. If you get a chance, take a look on this page and scroll down to the middle part of it, and you will see this star. It's a red giant star. The name is Mira. And you can actually see it actually has a more visible tail because it's a red giant and it's shedding material, gaseous material from itself besides plowing through the interstellar medium and causing a tail that way. But this is a quite spectacular picture. And, uh, a real nice tribute to a, 
a Galax satellite that uh, more than fulfilled its mission and only because of budget cuts it uh, would cost too much money compared to other things they've got online, for example, getting men back to be uh, transported up to the International Space Station, work on the Orion Project, work on possibly even asteroid capture. It just basically could have kept on working, but it just it kind of fell victim to uh, budget cuts and priorities and stuff like that. So um, They're hoping if the fundraiser does allow them to turn the satellite back on that Caltech can actually uh, finish the uh, sky survey and uh, the Galax satellite is uh, a sky survey in the UV um, radiation range is what it is. So it's basically a, a UV telescope and uh, maybe it can map the entire sky. And last one, this is a little geek project that I've been talking to Navy Thomas about and if you've been keeping up with his videos maybe you've seen a little bit of uh, information about it, um, about red light cameras and timing of yellow lights. There's a, a theory out there and some people seem to have evidence of it that in some cases red light cameras themselves are uh, being used at intersections but they're also tweaking the timing and giving people shorter yellow lights. Now according to the National Transportation Safety Administration for safety reasons a yellow light should be at least three seconds long so um, Navy Thomas started doing a few tests. I went out myself and started doing a few tests. Um, first off before I say anything else um, let me give you a, a little uh, bit of his video here he submitted. Hey wanted to give everybody a quick request on these uh, stoplight cameras go out and uh, go out and time them and shoot us a video oh, I'd like to see it from uh, different parts of the country different states just to see what the actual time is um, up in Chicago they're like four seconds long and here they're right around three It'd be interesting. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Tom. So anyway, our plan is to have you guys actually help us out with this if you would be interested. You don't need to be a motorcycle list. You don't need to be, uh, you could be a car driver. You could uh, walk, whatever. If you've got an intersection near you, take your camera, take a shot of the intersection going from green to yellow, and time out the yellow light and see. How you can do that is you can actually use your camera as a timer. If you're filming at 30 frames per second, then you make the film and then you uh, take the video and you just step frame it. What I will do Monday is I'm going to actually show you the way I did my tests just for an idea of how to do it and how to find a player where you can do step framing but you can actually do a pretty accurate timing of yellow lights and I would like to see if anybody's interested. It's a, it's a cool geek thing to do. It doesn't take much effort. I think actually if you just put a dash cam on your car and drove around you're going to catch enough yellow lights to kind of get an idea but if you possibly can try to get a comparison between the uh, intersections that have cameras and the intersections that are just regular intersections and see if there's a, a noticeable difference in the yellow light timing. So um, We had pretty good success before with the uh, people submitting different tools for people to guess on. Let's see if this is something that we can get enough of our uh, geek friends interested enough. It's uh, simple enough to do and I think kind of challenging and fun too. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care everybody. I will catch you next week.